Okay. Uh, this is not a super hard problem, but this is a pretty typical type of problem like you might see. Mm -hmm. Why is it minus 7a on that side? Ah, well, remember that comes from the acceleration here. Remember we saw that this acceleration was positive because object A was moving up. But this acceleration should be negative because this is going to be moving down. So, so we plugged in 7 times negative A. Wait, are you supposed to figure it out first and then take the magnitude of what you got and make it negative for B and positive for A, or do you include the, are you supposed to include the negative from the beginning? Mm, okay, I'm not sure if I'm following you exactly, but the, uh, here's the idea. Uh, the, th the thing that makes this clear to me is to ask yourself whether you're using a dot or not. So at this point, I just wrote down A with no dot, which means that this variable includes the sign inside of it. So I would not put any sign here, and this variable includes the sign in inside of it. But then when I thought about this a little bit more, I realized that these two things had equal magnitudes but opposite signs. And the easiest way to, to show that is to plug in a dot for the magnitude of both and put a plus sign in front of this acceleration and a negative sign in front of this acceleration. So that's where the sign came in. Uh, and then if you multiply this out, 7 times negative a is negative 7a. Okay. Uh, I, I, I feel like that maybe didn't answer your question. Uh, it's okay, I get it. Okay. So that's pretty important. Um, one of the most common ways of losing points is the signs. The signs are not um, a trivial matter. That's one of the main things you have to worry about during the whole course. Uh, and, I, uh, and again, there's lots of different ways to deal with this. Your TA might, or professor might have a different way, but I think this is by far the simplest. If things have, so this is what you do when things have equal magnitudes but opposite directions. When they have equal magnitudes, just plug in the same symbol with a dot for both of those magnitudes and put in the sign yourself. That's the simplest way to deal with this. There's other ways, but I think those are more, uh, more confusing. Uh, okay, so uh, again, we've gone through um, the steps here. Uh, let me point out some common mistakes here. A lot of students might think that maybe, um, say, this force would be the weight. Some people think that the weight is transmitted through the rope. So for example, they might say, oh, this has a weight of 49 newtons, so it should be pulling on this object with 49, 49 newtons of force. Well, that might seem tempting, but that didn't turn out to be right. It didn't. This has a weight of 49 newtons, but the rope is not pulling with 49 newtons. It's pulling with 57 newtons. Um, so you can't assume that the rope is going to transmit the weight. It might transmit more or less than the weight in simple problems the rope will transmit the weight, but don't let that confuse you into thinking that always happens. The only safe thing to do is figure it out using Newton's second law. If you don't skip the Newton's second law step, you'll get it correctly. Another way of putting it is, a lot of students kind of think that the weight of this object is being exerted directly on this object. But that can't be right because they're not in contact with each other, right? You can only feel a force by the thing that you're touching. So this is only feeling a force from the rope, not directly from this object. And it turns out that the rope tension does not have to be equal to the weight. If B was equal to 5 kilograms, would it be 49 newtons? The tension? Yes. Yeah. You could work it out all over again. If this was 5 kilograms, then they would both have the same weight of 49 newtons. So this would be uh, a number uh, 49 over here, and this would be the number 5 over here. And since these equations, uh, and if you actually... Uh, Works it out. They wouldn't Oh, acceleration. well, oh, then yeah. you have to use your common sense. Yeah. If these have the same mass, you would know the acceleration would have to be zero. Got it. And then you would see that the tension has to equal 49. Got so we have to use some common sense here as well to decide whether these objects are going to be moving or not in this case. Yeah, that's a good question. Again, the key thing is don't assume that you know what the tension is. Figure out what the tension is from Newton's second law. Here's another way of putting that. There's two different types of forces you're going to learn about in this term formula forces and reactive forces. A formula force is something that has a special formula that lets you calculate it, like the weight is m times g, or friction is mu times the normal force. But a reactive force is something that's just reacting to the other forces, and you don't figure that out from a formula, you figure it out from Newton's second law. Well, the normal force and the tension don't have special formulas, they're reactive. You just figure them out from Newton's second law. Okay. All right, uh, so the key thing here is to see how we use the systematic method, and we use these two ideas as our framework. Uh, let's see, so um, why don't we do a rope problem with an inclined plane? Inclined planes are one of the most important types of things you're going to be seeing. We're done with this question? That made sense? Mm -hmm. All right. Yes.
start with this first. This is another common type of problem where one object's on the surface and the other one isn't. So let's figure out the tension and the acceleration here. Is there friction? Good question. Let's start with no friction. So what should we do first? First we should draw three body diagrams for each. So how many will that give us? Two. No. So we will draw two free body diagrams because there's two objects. Oh, yeah. We're going to end up with maybe four Newton second laws. Uh, but we are actually going to draw the two pictures here because there's only two objects because we can put the x and y forces in the same picture. All right, well, what are all the forces on um, object A? Gravity, tension. Yeah, so there's the weight pulling oh, down. Nice. What direction is the tension in? Right. And what direction is the normal force in? Up. Up. Good. Any other forces? No. Nope, because there's nothing else touching the object. There's just the weight and the things that are touching the object. We can go ahead and figure out um, what our weight is going to be. I think we already figured that out as 49 newtons. Mm -hmm. uh, we might as well choose our positive directions. So then we can say this is negative 49 newtons. All right, and then what are the forces on object B? It will just be tension going up and down. And this is the same mass as before, so again that would be 7 times 9.8. And then we said it would be negative. Right, it's good to always put in that sign, 68.6 newtons. There's nothing else touching this object besides the rope. A lot of students would say, oh, also there's a normal force, because they're just so used to looking for normal forces. But this is not in contact with the surface, so there's no normal force. Okay, then what? And then... We should. Well, we already chose the axes. So next, we should break each force into components. Yes. We don't need to do that for any of But these are all parallel or anti parallel to the axes already. So they're all broken into components already. Good. Write down Newton's second law separately for each object and separately for each component. That's right. But we only need two. No. So how many uh, Newton's second laws are we going to end up writing here? Three. Yeah, we could end up writing three. So there's net force A, X equals MA, acceleration A, X. There's net force A, Y equals mass of A, acceleration A, Y. Don't we know that the net force of A, Y is just zero? This one's going to turn out to be quite simple. That's true. Um, but even if you know this is zero, that doesn't mean this equation is useless to us. Um, remember, we're not supposed to plug in a number for the net force. We're supposed to list the individual forces. That's something I should emphasize before. The way to solve problems, even if you know what number the net force is, you probably shouldn't plug that in. Instead, you should list the individual forces. That way you can figure stuff out about the individual forces. But we'll come back to that in a second. And then for object B, all we need to focus on is the Y component. Because there is no X component over here. Um, and then now you have to use your judgment about which formula is going to be easiest for you to work with. On some problems, you don't need to just chug through all the equations. Some will be easier. Let's just, for the heck of it, start with this equation, because this turns out to be quite simple. Simple. What should I list on the left-hand side here? Well, I should list the normal force minus 49. And what goes on the right-hand side of the net force equation in the y component for object A? Well, there is no going acceleration down, so that's going to be equal zero. Yeah, this object is motionless in the y component, just from our common sense. Common sense tells us this is not going to start plunging through the table or levitating off the table. So we know this acceleration has to be zero because it's not moving in the y component. And from this, we can figure out the normal force is 49 newtons. This is a case where the normal force equals the weight. Now, you didn't happen to be asked that on this particular problem. So in this particular problem, you could have done just as well leaving this equation out altogether. But if they'd asked you for the normal force, you would need this. Um, I just wanted to point out again, notice that even though the net force here is zero, we don't learn anything by plugging the number zero in on the left-hand side. We learn something by listing the individual forces. So the whole purpose here is to work vertically, list the individual forces on the left-hand side. We put the zero on the right-hand side because the acceleration is zero. Okay. 